By the power of God's what? Word. By the power of his word. Now, in the beginning was the word. word. And this word made all things. This word mm. was Christ. Mm. And he said, take that water, pour it into that vase. You don't need time to turn water into wine. You need talent. And he who made the plants, the grapes, had no trouble turning water into wine because his word had turned ground into grapes. In fact, his word had made ground appear out of nothing. Now that's real talent. You may have been able to make a mud pie, but he made the mud in the beginning out of nothing. Okay, so in the beginning, he made the universe by the power of his word. He destroyed the world through Noah's flood by the power of his word and is reserving the world for future judgment by the power of his word. Okay, one word from him and what happens? Um, all comes into existence or all burns. That's right. It can disappear with yeah. the power of his word. word. Now your and my word can't achieve that, but his can. But look, it gives you there a statement about God is patient. He doesn't really want to yeah, judge yeah, people yeah, and yeah. send us to hell. Yeah, yeah. Now read me verse 8. Uh, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. I, I, I've heard that from evolutionists. Yeah, I know, and they like to say, well, this must mean the days in Genesis are a thousand years yeah. long. Yeah. Okay, now note carefully. If you ever have a logical problem with a statement, always substitute something that you already understand for the bits you don't, and then read it backwards. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of a name like Tom in English? Yeah. Have you heard of the color red? Yeah. Have you heard of the color green? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's say this. To Tom, mm -hmm. e.g. to the Lord, mm -hmm. a day is like, red is like, green. To the mm -hmm. Lord, a day is like a thousand years. To Tom, red is like green, and green is like red. Mm. Okay, what would you know about Tom? What's wrong with his eyes? What? He's, he's a Daltonist. <laughs> he's, he's a color blind. Yeah. He can't tell the difference between the colors. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter to him which is one. The color has no effect on him. Okay, now that's what it means when you substitute those words. So if you mean red and green with Tom, it means the person being referred to has no, is not subject to any influence of these things that follow. To the Lord, a day is just like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. Time has no effect on God. He doesn't have days. So the days in Genesis can't be six of God's days. They can't be 6,000 years because God doesn't have days. He doesn't have years. He's no older today than he was a zillion years ago. He don't, when you don't have time, you don't get old. So this verse is about the fact that God is outside of time and you and I are locked into time. In fact, did you notice one thing? The Apostle Peter said to the Lord, a day is like a million years. Did he actually say that? Or did he use a thousand years? Uh, I guess he used a thousand years. Ever thought about why he didn't say to the Lord, a day is like a million years? Nope. Peter was a Hebrew. Yes. Moses was a Hebrew. Yes. Okay, from the creation to Peter, how many years had gone past if you took your Bible at face value? Was it a million years? Oh, no. Okay, so it's only in terms of thousands. It's so the very structure in the New Testament rules against the millions of years concept. Please, pay attention. This is, this is a thing that I'm hearing for the first time. Uh, could you please repeat this? This is crucial. You see, the person who says, ah, but the universe could be very old because God could have made those days long periods of time. Well, the fact is, Peter only ever uses the concept of day and thousand years. Never says to the Lord, a day is like 10 million years and 10 million years is like a day, because it would have meant nothing. nothing to him. It's not that the Hebrews ever didn't have that concept, mm. because you see, there were three million of them that mm. left Egypt. Mm. They knew about millions, of course, of course. but not in years, not in years right? Yeah, so they knew the numbers, but they didn't know anything about millions of years, because they knew the writings of Moses, they knew Moses said the present wasn't the key to the past, and they knew that God had reserved the future. It was kept by his word for judgment. Which brings us up to one last thing. Okay, when the Lord judges the heavens and the earth, do you know what's going to happen? I mean, what's he going to do? The last couple of chapters in the Bible are fascinating. Oh, um... Are we talking about the new heavens? Yeah. New earth? Read us Revelation chapter 21, just the first couple of verses. 
And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Uh, and the previous chapter is all about how those who refuse to believe are cast into the eternal pits of hell, correct? Mm -hmm. And then John says, I see a new heaven and a new earth. And of course, the many Christians who say, well, look, God could have used millions of years, are often the same Christians who say, well, we're looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. Question, how long is God going to take to make a new heavens and a new earth, Mr. Romulus? I guess not even that much it took him to make the first ones. Is he going to take millions of years? Oh, you mean we've got to hang around waiting for millions of years <laughs> while the Lord gets on with making the first stage and <laughs> we evolve into something else? And that's crazy, isn't <laughs> in, it? In, right? in between. <laughs> yeah. And, and so the whole point is the whole Christian hope is on the fact that there's one day going to be no more death and taxes. There's going to be a new heavens, no more thorns. You'll be able to have a pet T-Rex without it biting you. The lion will lay down with the lamb. They'll both eat grass. Wonderful. And it won't take millions of years. It won't take thousands of years. It'll be like that. Because the same God who made the heavens and the earth didn't take time. He took talent. And he can judge us just like that as well. Better than that, he can prepare the way for salvation. Darwin was a theology graduated, he became a biologist. As much as I'm concerned, Lyell was a kind of a lawyer. He became a geologist. <clears throat> Why is it today that uh, actually so high respect is paid to people who actually have nothing to do with the sciences they've been claiming to establish or at least to improve? Um, where is the place of a theologian today? Where should be? Well, what's happened in the past several hundred years is the theologian, who used to be regarded as the queen, the king of the sciences, is now down here as the peasant of all knowledge. And biology and geology, which used to be regarded as the lesser than, because they dealt with only temporary things, have elevated themselves up here. So the true God has been thrown out and the false God has raised its ugly head. Now you look for, well, perhaps in a million years we'll solve this problem of death. And in doing so, you ignore the true God who can solve the problem of death like that. Humble yourself, admit you're a sinner, repent of your sins, and re-allow that creator to remake you in his image and then give you a brand new heavens and new earth. Praise the Lord. Uh, friends, we just finished with salvation. We just finished with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray the Lord is going to open your eyes, open your heart, that you may understand this truth. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you, to seeing you, to see one another uh, in a new program. Um, they can write to our information site too, can't they? Oh, yes, they can. Um, if they've enjoyed the program, where should they write? Uh, info at creationresearch.net. Have a blessed day and hope to see you again. God bless you. Thank you.